<laughs> but um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. There's a lot of you and nice. Um, I guess I'm just as excited as you are to be here today. Um, it's, I love this record store. It's awesome. A lot of history here and the, the staff have been very nice to me. And um, I'm going to do some some songs for you in a second. Um, but I just really want to say how happy I am to be able to celebrate 20 years of the album Never, Never Give In being released. And um, I want to tell you a little story about the Never Give In album, which I've never really told anybody. Um, I was recording um, a lot of different projects in the UK. I was actually signed to three different record labels at the same time. And what was happening is British, British MCs were really taking off. And a couple of the guys, like Papa Levi and another guy called Smiley Culture, had pop hits, which was unheard of for British MCs to make it into the pop charts. So all the labels I was working for at the time were all pushing me to make fun lyrics or humorous lyrics so that I could have a potential pop hit, which I wasn't really into trying to become a pop artist. I just wanted to write songs that I was inspired by and if today I was inspired to write something funny I'd write something funny if tomorrow I was inspired to write something spiritual I'd write something spiritual and so on and so forth but these companies are trying to really make us become artificial artists so that they could create record sales um, which for me I had a hard time really dealing with that and then, you know, I, I, I went along with a few of them and gave them my humorous lyrics. I didn't really try to create any pop hits. I just gave them the, the humorous lyrics I had. But while that was all going on, there was like apartheid in South Africa. There were wars going on. There was all kinds of issues going on. And I would write about these issues and nobody wanted to take any of those serious songs. And um, I decided that I would go and spend my own pocket money and go in the recording studio with my band, who were the Reggae Revolution at the time, and record an, my, an, my own album with my own money. And I went into the studio. I was pretty broke at the time, but managed to get the money together and called in a few favors. And after recording the album, I went to Greensleeves Records, who had the most potential to really do a good job with the Never Given album. And Chris Crapnell was the head of the label. And I'd become pretty good friends with him. And I felt so proud about having the Never Given album. I went down there and it was, it, I called it Never Give In as well because it was a struggle for me to, cr to go and record my own album. It was a struggle to be accepted as a reggae artist being born and raised in the UK as a starter. Mm -hmm. And to then to become accepted and then not really respected was an even harder struggle for me to overcome. So never give in meant a lot of things as well as things in my childhood, lots of things that album represented and I, I felt so good that I had finally created this project. I went to Chris Cracknell at Green Seas, went to his desk, put it on his desk and said, Chris, I've just recorded my first album. I would really love for you to listen to it. And, and release it. And he picked it up, turned, turned it round, looked at the titles, and then he threw the album in the bin. Oh. Which a lot of A&R record companies do sometimes, just for the hell of it. And he threw it in the bin and he looked at me and he says, nobody's interested in these kind of lyrics. Social lyrics, spiritual lyrics. No one's interested. And I definitely am not interested. And I was like, okay. So obviously I walked away from that label.